Good morning everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen wishing you a very good morning all the way from Sydney, Australia. I hope you are well wherever you are in the world and I hope that you are safe. Thank you for joining me on the last edition of Your Request Recipes for the week. That's what we've been doing all week here in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. I have been doing recipes that you have requested over the years that I, some of them I haven't quite gotten around to, but now I've, I've given you a couple. We did um, the most fabulous pate, a very healthy, nutrient dense pate uh, a couple days ago. And then following on from that, I did what I have named Lady Lemmingtons. So for anyone who loves a good Lemmington, now you can get a really healthy one as well. We did that a couple days ago. And today, this request only came through earlier in the week. Uh, I asked the question in our private group in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen family, what is that one recipe that you adore that you'd like to see me make live? And guess what came back? Happened to be one of my favorites too. Well, actually lots and lots of requests for recipes came back. A lot of them I already done. I've done hundreds of recipes over the last couple of years. And for, um, for people who've been joining us recently, you're just starting to really um, begin to explore the recipes that I've already done here on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. But one recipe that I haven't done, and it's because it, it proved to be quite tricky, was the traditional custard pie. So custard pie, as we know, um, there is multiple versions all around the world. You have the Portuguese egg tart, you have the, um, the Cantonese style egg tart as well. Uh, there is a classic custard pie from the southern part of the United States, which is very popular. But the custard pie that we're going to do today is very traditional to the UK, also to Australia and to New Zealand. So for anyone here who's ever seen that wonderful, seductive looking custard pie sitting in the bakery, topped with a bit of nutmeg, with that lovely little jiggle. And I think that's why I love it so much. It's all about that jiggle. It's just got to slightly jiggle jiggle just a little bit for you. And I think that's what has enamored me for all these years. So today, yes, we are making a classic custard pie. I'm gonna teach you guys two um, particular techniques here. The first technique is how to make your own gluten-free, sugar-free, grain-free pastry. So this is a low-carb, sweet pastry that you can use. It's very versatile. You can use for any of your pie fillings. But of course, we're gonna make a wonderfully smooth and rich dairy-free, gluten-free, sugar-free custard to go inside of it. So I'm teaching you two techniques today. Um, it is worth knowing both of them. Yes, I know this may be a little bit for some people, a little bit, you know, um, a little bit difficult <laughs> because it, we are talking about pastry, but this pastry is actually really easy to make. It's, it's very um, user-friendly for want of a better word. So let's get into the recipe. As I said, we're learning two techniques today. Let's start with the pastry. Come on down to my bench. I'm gonna teach you guys how to make the pastry. Um, if Mahe wouldn't mind plugging in, my <laughs> plugging in my... I forgot that I unplugged it to plug in the jar. So um, with the pastry, I'm gonna be making it straight into my little machine because it's easy, right? And I do like to make things a little bit easy. So this particular pastry, as I was saying, it is very, very versatile, and I'm giving you ingredients to make two individual pies. Um, if you would like to make a large pie, so one large pie, just double the recipe that I'm giving you guys today. Of course, I'll be sharing this recipe with you as a PDF, but the recipe I'm showing you guys today, because that for me was custard pie. It was always as an individual, and it was usually in the bakery or in the school, in the school shop, you know, in the tuck shop. Um, you had that custard pie, so this recipe for the pastry makes two of those. So the first thing we need to think about doing is I'm putting in some, obviously, gluten-free flour. I am using a nut flour, almond flour, but feel free to play around with the flours. So you don't have to use almond, but you could definitely try it with pecans, you could maybe even do a walnut one. Just obviously the flavor will change um, quite a lot if you do change the, the type of flours that you're using. But you can also use cashew if you want it to stay quite a plain flavor. So into my little food processor, I'm adding 110 grams, which is about 3.8 ounces of my almond flour. Yes, you could use almond meal as well, that doesn't matter. So 110 grams go in there. And of course, like I said, double it if you wanna make four pies individuals, or if you wanna make one large one. We're also gonna be adding in some coconut flour. 
And the coconut flour um, portion today is 35 grams. And I know it's quite exact portionings here, but this, when it comes to making things like pastry, you have to be quite exact. So 35 grams, which is 1.2 ounces of our coconut flour goes in there. You don't want to add too much coconut flour because it can dry it out. So it's, it's, it's a very precise measurement when it comes to our coconut flour. Uh, also going to add in um, the next ingredient is, I suppose you could say it's our sweetener, but it's also going to turn it into a prebiotic, of course, is our inulin powder. And with inulin, we're adding in 25 grams of inulin goes into our little bowl. That's about, oh, about an eighth of an ounce for our American friends. So 25 grams of inulin goes in there. And we're also going to add in one egg, which I have here, is going to go in there as well. And the last ingredient, I have my coconut oil here. So remember, this is a dairy-free pastry. And with my coconut oil, perfect, perfect temperature currently in Sydney for this coconut oil because it's not too hard. So in other words, it's really easy for me to take out of the jar, but it's also not too soft. So what you kind of want is you want it to be, you can see that I'm able to stick my finger in it. So it's, it's soft, but not melted. That's the ideal with your, with your coconut here. And I'm adding into here 40 grams of that soft, but not melted coconut oil goes in. If you're wondering whether you could use butter or ghee, yes you could, a nice grass fed butter or ghee if you wanted to do a dairy version, that's absolutely fine. But for us today, we're going completely dairy free, which is fabulous. So that then goes in there. Now we just want to give it a bit of a blend. Yes, thank you Mahi for turning on my, my little uh, power. It's always good to have power. It's very handy. All right, so that goes in. Give it a bit of a blend. What we're looking to do is to create a dough now. And look at that. Your machine literally takes seconds to give you a lovely dough. That's all you need to do. It's so fabulous. It's so, yes, you could do that by hand, but <laughs> it literally takes seconds. All right, so um, now that our dough is looking pretty good, and as I was saying, this is, this is a, quite a versatile dough. So you don't have to worry too much about overhandling it because one of the, one of the things when, you're, when you are working with gluten, obviously my hands are very clean. When you are working with gluten, someone asks, what if the coconut oil was more melted liquid? Then you need to put it in the fridge or the freezer for a little bit. So you don't want it to be melted because if your coconut oil is melted when you add it, it's gonna separate from the pastry as it cooks and you're gonna get an oil slick at the base of your pastry, which you don't want. But you see this consistency that I've got here? This is absolutely perfect. That is the, the, the simplest dough you could ever make. I mean, look at that, that took seconds to make. And it is so, it's not sticking to my fingers, which is really, really good as well. And all you want to do now is you wanna give it a bit of a rest because it's just gonna be easier to handle when it comes time to rolling it out. So the best way to rest your dough is I actually like to, um, I actually like to portion my dough. So the best way is actually this dough doesn't make this dough doesn't make two, it makes four. <laughs> <laughs> this is for I think this is for four. Oh gosh, I've gone and confused myself. There you go, I've given you enough dough to make four of those wonderful pastry. Not two, this is for four. Alright, so what you want to do with your dough is I like to portion it before it even goes for a bit of a chill. So putting it into a round sort of a disc and then cutting it into quarters means you have the exact portion to fit in one of those. Isn't that perfect? The exact portion. All right, so give it a bit of a flatness just so it's kind of already in the shape that you're going to roll it out in when it comes out of the fridge. Because we do need to chill it. As I was saying, it just makes it a lot easier to handle coming out. So then you want to just cover it in cling film. Wrap these little, these little discs in cling film. And then they go into the fridge and you let that chill for 30 minutes to an hour. As I was saying, it just makes it so much easier to roll when it comes out the other side. So um, I'm going to put those over there. Pretend I've just taken them to the fridge. Which I, I have, yeah, they're in the fridge now, having a bit of a chill. But here's some that I prepared earlier. So, this has been uh, in the fridge 
for about an hour. And what has now happened is we have a wonderful, very, you know, quite a lot firmer disc, which is just going to make our job so much easier when it comes to rolling out. So grab yourself up the best, easiest way to do this. Grab yourself up a bit of paper, and it's just non-stick baking paper, quite a big square as you can see. We put the dough in the middle, and then we just fold it down, and then taking up our rolling pin, because this means you're not having to add any more flour to the board, everything happens in your little piece of dough, uh, in your little sheets of paper, and you give it a bit of a roll, and you want to get it fairly thin, a couple of millimetres, um, in, in thickness, but don't go too crazy because otherwise your your pastry uh, When it comes time To take your pie out of the case it could break on you. So don't go too thin You kind of want it To look like this Yeah, that's about the sort of size you're getting out of each of those little portions Each of those little portions you're getting one of those so I'm just going to put that to the side first because I'm just going to show you guys how to handle this because it's really important that we grease this appropriately. And the other thing I like to do is a bit of a, uh, I suppose, an insurance policy is I also like to create just a little circle of baking paper, non-stick baking paper to go down there. Like I said, that's my insurance policy. Um, and, and even though I've never had one stick on me, I still do it every single time. Because you never know, right? That is my, that's my thought. You never know. So, I've just got another small piece of paper here. And I'm non-stick, of course. What I'm going to do is put my little case down there. Take up my pretty pink pen. And then just roughly draw a little template around. I don't want to just sort of shove paper into there. Because we're making pies. And pies are quite delicate when they come out. So, I am being a little bit more careful than normal when it comes to lining this case, I actually have found that as I've been testing this recipe, it's taken me a while to get correct. And so I really hope you love it as much as I do because it is a labor of love. And everything I've done when it comes to creating this recipe for you guys, I've been very, very precise with. I don't know. I want to get it right for you. So there you go. Look at that. Not too bad of a circle. So I'm going to take myself up. I've got a little bit of coconut oil here. And I'm just going to spray the case. Make sure you do the sides as well. Because obviously you don't want it to stick. And then we take our little piece of paper. And we put it on the bottom. Don't even know it's there. Insurance policy done. So go back to your pastry. Looking good. And this may take a little bit of getting used to. But take your time. It is so worth learning this particular technique. So take your time. So hand goes flat down here. Yeah? Uh, look like that. And then we take it off. See, that's the other reason why the paper is so good. You don't have to worry about anything sticking to the board. It all comes off because you're able to pick it up really, really easily. So take it off. And then very gently, ceremoniously, plonk it over top of your pie tin. And then you just want to let it kind of drop down. Yeah, you're going to get a crack. That's fine because now it's time to do the surgery. So surgery means that you are literally, and that's why I said this, this um, pastry is very forgiving because you're able to poke it and prod it and, you know, get it into the places that you want to get it into, which is obviously the pie tin. So you're not having to, um, you know, worry that you've got cracks because this is now the time where we do our little bit of surgery. We make sure everything is lined really well. And the best way to do that is I just take up a little knife. I cut off the edges that are overhanging. And the other thing about this pastry, unlike normal you know, white flour pastry, is that it shrinks when you cook it in the oven, when you do the, the first bake. Whereas this wonderful pastry here, this forgiving, very forgiving pastry, does not shrink as much. So even though I'm just going up the sides with my little bits and pieces that I've cut off, I don't have a fear, I don't have a great fear that once it's baked, it's gonna shrink right back and we're only gonna have, you know, a kind of a three quarters full pastry um, pie tin. So as much as you want to, you can be really, really particular here about getting it right up to the sides. You can also, you know, kind of smooth it down around the edges and get it as 
pretty as you like. You can spend as much time on this as you like, or if you don't like, <laughs> it can be then known as a rustic pie. Remember, we always have that out. That's our waiver. If, uh, <laughs> if you're like, yeah, that's good enough, then it's rustic. It's country style. But if you want to be, you know, <laughs> really particular, this is your time to shine. If you're like me and you've got a, a minor case of OCD, not major, just a minor case of OCD, you can spend a bit of time going around the edges and getting everything really, really smooth and looking really, really pretty and, you know, really, really tidy or not. Isn't it fabulous? Okay, so once we're at this point, you make sure there's no holes in there. That's the main thing. Whatever happens at the top there happens at the top there. But your primary objective is to make sure you don't have any holes in the, in the case. Make sure that you're pushing your pie right into the edges of the case as well. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to do something known as blind baking, which means that we're going to cook the case before we add the filling. But in order to ensure that it's nice and flat as it's cooking, I take another piece of baking paper. You could even use the same baking paper and just cut that in half if you wanted to. And you want to take quite a large one. You see it overhangs. Take that and screw it up. <laughs> screw it up. And then place that into your pie case. I know it seems like a lot of rigmarole, but once you learn this technique, it's just going to be amazing. And just make sure that the, the paper completely covers the edges there because the edges of your case will cook first and you don't want them to get too dark. So that goes in and then you take something, I've got these baking, these are called baking beans, so they're literally just made to, to, to bake pastry cases blind and they're gonna weight it down and stop it from, from rising up, which we don't want. Um, if you don't have baking beans, you can use um, raw beans, like kidney beans or something like that, or some type of pulse. You could also use rice, because, you know, we don't eat cook with rice. <laughs> so you might as well use it to bake your pie cases. So once you've done that, and you've got four, you're going to have four pie cases once you've done that. Then you're going to send this off to the oven, and your oven is set at 170 degrees Celsius, which is 340 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're going to bake that blind... You're not blind, the pastry's blind. You're gonna bake that blind for 15 minutes, yeah? 15 minutes in your oven. So, here are some I prepared earlier. Here they are. You can see that the edges have cooked up nicely. They have got a little bit browner there on, on the edges. The, the case is cooked really, really well, which is very, very important. And, of course, no holes in my case, which is the other thing that you want to be mindful of. But once again, pastry is really all about insurance policies. And if you want to make sure that you give this almost like a waterproof, a waterproof uh, coating, is take up an extra egg yolk. Well, an egg yolk, not an extra. Take up an egg yolk, and then using a pastry brush, you just want to brush the edges of the cook. You can do this when it's straight, when it's still hot. Obviously, you'll be using, you won't be picking it up with your with your hand because it will be hot. But you can do this straight out of after the 15 minutes are up in the oven. Get rid of the baking beans and then you just cover it right up to the edges because your filling is going to come right up to the top with your egg yolk, your just lightly whipped egg yolk, and then you're going to pop this back into the oven just for two minutes and that's gonna dry it out. And that is gonna to help to create your, your second insurance policy of the day, which is your waterproofing. You just coated it. So over to the oven I go. Two minutes. Two minutes is there. Let's now think about the filling because this is all about the filling at the end of the day, isn't it? And it really is. So in my pot here, I have, oh, we have a question first, yes. Robin asks, can, could you use a pie maker? Could you use a pie maker? No, Robin, you can't. I mean, you could use a pie maker to make your pastry, but you're going to need to take it out. It does need to go into the oven because this custard cooks very gently. So you couldn't use a pie maker once you've done your filling. It does definitely need to go into the oven, this one. Unless, of course, you've got a temperature sitting on your pie filling that gets down to 130 degrees Celsius on your pie maker. So in my pot here, this is the filling, remember? In my pot here, and this is for four... <laughs> of my little 
little uh, pies or one large one. In my pot here, um, you're going to want to put 450 mils of a good quality coconut milk, so a nice thick one. You guys know I like to use the Cara brand. If you think your coconut milk is not of great quality, then I would suggest you use coconut cream because we need that thickness. But my milk's so good, my coconut milk's so good, I'm using 450 mils, which is 14 fluid ounces of um, coconut milk in my pot. I'm now going to add in two teaspoons of a pure vanilla extract is going in there. That's going to help, obviously, to give us that custard taste. And then we're going to go over to our stove and allow that to heat up, come up to, come up to the boil. I'm just turning that on. All right. So I'm just showing you guys here. I'm not going to do the full, the full amount. The egg quota, and yes, this custard does require eggs, so if you are egg free, I will apologise in advance. I have not yet been able to work out how to get the custard jiggle without adding eggs, so we are going to be adding in. And this is for a full, the full four individual pies of one large one. You want to add in, let's not waste those. Let's keep those. Oh, two minutes is up! Let's just take that, we're going to leave that to the side there to cool down. Fabulous. So our two minutes is up. So what you want to do is you want to just add the egg yolks to a bowl. And for you guys, because you are, for the full recipe, you want to add eight egg yolks. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's basically two egg yolks per pie. Remember, we're going for the jiggle here. So you want to add eight egg yolks, large egg yolks, to a bowl. This has been my favorite way to... Uh, to separate the egg yolks and the egg whites. is literally you just jiggle it from side to side. And as you're jiggling, the egg white is just naturally falling off just like that. Fabulous. All right, keeping an eye on our coconut milk behind us. So imagine I've got eight in there. Keep your egg whites. You could make pavlova or meringue or any of those fabulous things. Okay, into um, the custard. We are also going to, into our egg yolks, sorry. We are also going to be adding in 120 grams of zero as sugar erythritol is going in there as well. It's making a lot of noises behind me. I'm just checking, it's fine. <laughs> I can hear it splattering away. All right, so 120 grams of erythritol goes into your custard mix. 120 grams. And then you just need to give it a bit of a whisk together. A bit of a whisk. You don't have to worry about the sugar dissolving here because one of the wonderful things about erythritol is that it dissolves really, really easily. So just a bit of a whisk. And now behind me, my coconut milk has pretty much come to the boil. It's that, it's that simple, right? Just bring it to the boil. Take it off the heat straight away. And as you're whisking, make sure you're whisking while you're doing this. You want to pour a hot coconut milk or cream straight into the mix. All right, you've created the custard. You don't have to put that back on the stove at all. Not anywhere near it. That is a custard done. So I'm actually going to take my custard pies straight out of the oven they're on the oven rack now i would suggest that when it's time for you to make your custard pies you do this in the oven but because you can't see me in the oven over there then what you want to do is you want to do it i'm going to show you guys how to do it here but this everything that happens now happens actually in the oven and the reason why you want to do this in the oven because we're going to be filling these pies really really full with our custard mix and the last thing you want to do is wobble, wobble, wobble over and um, spill some of your custard. So I suggest that you do this on the rack in the oven. Open your oven door up, pull the rack out, but just make sure that you hold on to the rack as you're filling because otherwise the rack might tip. <laughs> so just don't, don't completely pull, just keep your hand on it. Just once again, insurance policy, right? Insurance policy. So the easiest way to fill, remember the, these had their little, their little second uh, dry out with the egg yolk. So the easiest way that I have found to fill our custard pies is to do it in a little jug. 
So pour your custard into a little jug. So much easier because you will be surprised how much filling you're going to actually, how much, how full you, full, sorry, you can get these pies. So you want to add, you know, about that much. And then you want to add a little bit more. <laughs> and then you want to add a little bit more. And when you think you can't add a little bit more, that's when you add a little bit more. Hence why you should do this over bar in the, in the oven. Because you're going to fill it right to the top. And the last thing you want to do is go wobble wobble over to the oven and then you get a messy, obviously, pie. It comes out all over with pie cases. But then you lose some of the filling and you don't want to do that. All right, the last thing that we need to think about doing and potentially the most important step is we need to sprinkle nutmeg on top of it because that's what custard pies are like in New Zealand, Australia, and I'm sure in the UK as well, is we have to sprinkle nutmeg. Now, you can use um, whole nutmeg, ideally, whole nutmeg um, with a little nutmeg grater but for those of us who don't and me included um, I realize I don't have a nutmeg grater, a real fine grater at the moment so I am I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to be using ground nutmeg and I'm going to just sprinkle it over the top of the pie be fairly liberal like I think in the recipe I've got you know a teaspoon and a half of nutmeg for four pies but you know I'll leave that up to you if you're not a nutmeg fan um, then just go gently but I love I love this part I love the smell as even that little bit of nutmeg as this pie is baking it is so delicious the smell that comes out of the oven just from that nutmeg all right so to prove my point on why you should do this in the oven I am now going to attempt please hold your breath I'm now going to attempt to take this into the oven. <laughs> I'm going to open the oven door. Really important thing here that I have done before these go into the oven is you need to turn your oven down. Remember this cooks, this bakes very gently. You want to turn your oven down to 130 degrees Celsius, which is 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Turn it right down. We're going to do a gentle cook. <sighs> That's why we don't do it there. That's why we do it in the oven, because she's just made a mess. Oh, bless. Oh, there we go. Now it's on the oven floor as well. All right, and then we're going to turn it on for, we're going to start with 30 minutes. So half an hour. And look at her mess. So oh, you already were looking at it. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> so now you know why we don't do it on our bench and do it in the oven grab yourself up a little jug it's so worth it so now that we're at this point in our um custard pie baking session it's literally a matter of waiting that 30 minutes um to begin with but the, the entire cooking time might actually take around about 40 to 45. now the reason i've given you such a variation in cooking is if you're making um because you i don't know how big your pie cases are going to be how deep so 30 to 45 minutes but what you need to do is you need to keep an eye on your custard because remember what we're after is that seductive jiggle which makes the it, it makes the pie in fact um what you're actually looking for when i say jiggle think of it like a bosom that is what a natural bosom not a fake one a real bosom kind of jiggles it's quite seductive that is what you're looking for in your custard. So you need to keep an eye on it. And I would start from about the 30 minute mark. I would start to keep an eye on it and I'd check it every couple of minutes. And I'll just give the, the tray a little bit of a gentle shake. And it needs to be set, but it needs to sort of have the jiggle. All right. Can I show you one? <laughs> These only came out of the oven about 10 minutes before we started this broadcast. So um, the tin's cooled down. But what I want to show you, uh, can you see that? Oh, you probably can't. Can you see that little jiggle? That's not me jiggling, that's the custard jiggling. So it is set, but it's not firm. Because if you overcook it, it kind of, you know, it's not the same. This is the beauty is in, I wonder if I can get that closer. Can kind of, yeah, there you go. 
The beauty is in the jiggle. So, now we're going to hold our breath for the second time when she attempts to take it out of the pastry case. <laughs> the best way to do it, I've found, is once again, my little, my little friend, the paring knife, is, um, is definitely helpful in this instance. So, taking up your... Like, allow it to cool once it comes out and you've got that lovely jiggle. Just allow it to cool. You know, you probably want to leave it for a good 20 minutes before you attempt this. And then taking up your little knife... Look at my edges, aren't they, aren't they wonderful? I really, I really thought about you guys and I focused. And I wanted to get a really lovely smooth edge. So taking up your little knife, you just want to go around and just kind of release it from, you know, I'm being really gentle here. Release it from the uh, case there. Remember we had another insurance policy, which was that little piece of paper under there. So fingers crossed, let's... I'm just oh, breathing. <laughs> this could go horribly wrong. It still tastes good though, right? That's the main thing. It's still going to taste good. Okay, are you ready? So I'm just going to put my hand over top just like that. I know it's said it's not good. Oh, we had a piece of pastry fall. <laughs> it's not looking too good. Okay, ready? Hey! And there you go. Oh, that was actually quite, that was quite good. There you go. We have our fabulous custard pie, fresh out of its case. Thank you, the pink baby managed to stay in the back in the back in the case. Let's cut into it because we need to see what it's like on the in the inside. Because as I was saying, the, the jiggle is still there. And as this cools down, I don't suggest you put this in the fridge because it's gonna get a bit too firm. I suggest you just allow it to cool um, on the on the wire, wire board. But let's cut into it. I probably need a bigger knife than that. It's probably my little knife is not gonna. My little knife is not gonna cut it right now. <laughs> See what I did there? Oh goodness me! All right, I've been I've been knee deep in, in custard pie for the last you know <laughs> twenty four hours trying to get this recipe right for you guys. Okay, bigger knife. Let's see if we're gonna get a. Oh 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 no! That's all right. I should have. I spoke too soon. It's not that scary. All right. <gasps> Here we go. Oh, look. Look at that. It's perfectly set, but it's still incredibly moist. Isn't that fabulous? I love the pastry. It's not too thick. I don't, I have, I've just, you see that pastry. You just focus on that pastry. It is, it is thick enough so that the pie holds together. And look at the color that we've gotten on the outside of it. Isn't that gorgeous? It's thick enough so that the pie holds together but it's not too thick that you're just getting a mouthful of pastry because that would be terrible and the pastry underneath if i can just carefully pick this up oh i just want to show you guys can you see that that is phenomenal just gorgeous um the pastry is crispy on the bottom it's not soggy which is so wonderful uh, i'm gonna need to taste it now because you know part of my job someone's gonna do the tasting <laughs> Obviously, it gets a little bit messier when you try to cut into even smaller portions. That's a big portion. I just need to cut it into another piece. I'm going to have a mouthful of pie for a while if I try to do that. All right. Okay. Whoa. It will firm up a little bit as it, as it um, cools. Remember that as well. It will firm up as it cools. Are you ready? <laughs> Hard my job today. I hope you all feel for me what I have to go through. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that is so good. It's rare that I get to actually eat a warm custard pie. Oh, the nutmeg. Oh, the nutmeg hit me. At first, I was tasting the custard. I got a lovely bit of, you know, texture from the pastry. And then right at the end, just before... I swallowed I got the nutmeg and that was just like the nutmeg on the pie instead of the icing on the cake oh. <laughs> it is good wow yeah I, I very rarely get a warm custard pie let me tell you it is wonderful I think we have a question. Yes, I'm going to have one more little slice. Stephanie asks, can you put them on a tray on the rack in the oven or won't they cook as well? Can you put them on the tray in the rack in the oven? Um, no need to. Um, was it Kirsty? Stephanie. Stephanie, sorry. 
No need to put them on a tray, Kirsty, because you really want the air to flow through. Put it straight onto the rack. But do it in the oven. <laughs> that, is the, that is the secret. Do it in the oven. Even taking a tray over, forget about it. It's too hard. The easiest way, because remember, you're going to top it up and you're going to top it up even more. Because the amount of ingredients I've given you for the, for the filling exactly fills it to that level of a very traditional pie case. One that size, yeah? So um, you could do it on a tray, but uh, honestly, you want the air to flow around the pastry cases and they'll cook a lot evenly. Because what you've got to remember, especially if you're using metal trays, uh, metal tins, they get very hot. Metal heats up in the oven. And so if you've got it in metal on a metal tray, it's a little bit too much heat. So do everything straight onto your wire rack. It'll, it'll, your results will be like that. <laughs> Which is all oh, fabulous. Now, how could you serve it? You could consider, well, just serve it like that. That's custard pie. But if you really want to do more like a desserty type of thing, I'm going to show you guys what I, what I made. I had some strawberries that were a little bit, um, these fresh strawberries, they're a little bit past their, their good raw eating stage. So what I did in my little pot here, as you can see, is I just took off obviously the green bits, and there's a punnet of strawberries in here. I added one tablespoon of Aretha Toll, and I just want to show you the liquid, the gorgeous liquid that came out of my strawberries once I did that. So I would suggest that if the strawberries aren't looking too great, throw them in a pot without the without the tops, with that little bit of um, erythritol, just a little bit, just to sweeten it up. Unless your strawberries are really, really sweet. Ours are still not quite that sweet. And then you get the opportunity, if you wanted to just take this custard pie one step further, of adding these wonderful tart berries to the top of your pie. A little bit of drizzle down there as well. And you have quite a fabulous, fabulous dessert that you have just created using those wonderful strawberries. Like I said, they were over, over, overdone, overcooked. But now we have this. Come down, I'll show you. Show you right to the very end. You get to create this wonderful, wonderful dessert with our custard pie, our gorgeous, you know, just cooked strawberries so they hold their shape. All I did was like, like literally cook them until they, um, they, came to the, they came to a little boil. The syrup came out of them naturally. There's no water in there. That was just a tablespoon of erythritol and a pound of strawberries. And look what we have created. Isn't that fabulous? We have a question. Yes, Mahini. So Mara asks, is the oven temperature the same for the pastry, 170? No, 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 no. <laughs> really important. I'll be showing this as a PDF tomorrow because I know there's a few steps here. The pastry is at 170, which is 340 degrees Fahrenheit. And the filling is a lot lower, down to 130 degrees Celsius, which is 270 degrees Fahrenheit. So you go from high with the pastry, and then you knock it right back down to 130 degrees Celsius, which is 270 degrees Fahrenheit for the filling. So the filling needs a very gentle cook in order to get the jiggle. <laughs> you're looking for the jiggle. Remember that. So there you go. Whether you're having it with berries like we are or not maybe you're just having it as a pie just like that go and enjoy it and make it and let me know what you think i am absolutely even now blown away because one of the things that i struggle with and it was funny i saw someone post this on um on facebook a couple days ago in our private group they said, really enjoying all the healthy food, but really struggling to walk past the bread in the supermarket. And I had to laugh, because I'm sure there's many of us that feel that way. Well, my pain is walking past a bakery and seeing custard pies, because I have forever been in love with them, since I'm a little, little, little girl. So now we can have our custard pie and eat it too. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Um, don't forget we're doing a fast on Monday evening, Sydney time. I'll post that in our private group. We're doing a group fast again. And all next week on Bridget's Kitchen, we'll be doing the perfect foods to be breaking your fast. So this is for people who have joined us on a fast, people who do extended fasts, 
We're going to do all week in Bridget's Kitchen, the perfect food to break your fast. So it's going to be a great week next week. I hope you can join me. Don't forget, subscribe to our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on Pinterest and Instagram. Um, if you want even more gluten-free, sugar-free, low-carb recipes, I hope to see you all soon. Have a great weekend. Take care, everyone. Bye.